Um, so that's the Bluetooth keyboard. Um, now we're going to take a quick look at a day of capturing. Uh, in this case, the child strikes back. And uh, I'm just going to play a little fun little clip for you guys. Let me wind it back up here. So basically, I uh, get suited up and um, this is like a typical day of mocap uh, for one of these things. Now, generally, I try to, to capture every scene, every character uh, for a short film in one day. Uh, and depending on the short, that could be you know an hour, up to two, three, four, five hours probably for, for the longest one I've done. Um, and the other thing I do in this process that saves me a lot of time is I, I hate trying to like go back through all the takes and get all the little bits and pieces that are good in each one and splice them all together. It just sucks up a bunch of time. Uh, so I try to nail the take in one go. Um, completely unrealistic for you know multiple with other talent and a real production. You really want the best of what's there regardless. Um, so not something you'd want to do uh, unless you're really trying to do things fast, but it definitely saves me a ton of time uh, trying to do it that way. So I just keep doing the take until I feel like I've, I've got it. Uh, and it's usually the last couple takes. Um, so once I've captured uh, all the stuff for a day, then I will um, jump into Unreal and I'll start building what I call an action sequence. So action sequences are, are location specific. So I'm going to just open up uh, Baby Yoda's apartment here. And let's open up the action sequence. So, so basically, for any one location, in this case, the apartment, I will set up everything that happens from the beginning of the short to the end uh, on this one sequence. And um, basically, I try to think about it like, you know, if I was on set, I'd have, uh, this isn't really possible to do in reality, but I'd have all the actors, everything choreographed for the entire location just happen at, at once. Uh, and then I could kind of cover it with multiple cameras. So that's sort of how I think about it. Um, you know, anything that's a character that's animating a keyframe, you know, triggering a particle emitter or a special effect or anything that moves or uh, this triggered all happens in this one sort of sequence. Uh, and if we take a look, let's just see, uh, take a look at the, the agent here. Um, so what I'll do is I'll start going through his selects and uh, just dropping them down on the timeline, kind of like this. This is uh, the original capture. And uh, just start sketching out, you know, his lines. Um, and then I'll sort of jump around. I'll do the same thing for Baby Yoda. Uh, until I get essentially to the end. The other thing I'm also trying to do here is I'm adding, as I go, I'm adding sort of like breather areas where I know, you know, some music's going to kick in or uh, I just want sort of a pause for some some reason in the story. I'll try to build that stuff in as, as good as I can while I'm doing this this layout. Um, there's some, some of these other tracks I'll, I'll kind of talk about a little bit later. Um, now, once I get that part done, then I'll probably run in and I'll sketch sketch out the other characters. So there's like IG-11. He just has like a very simple little looping animation. Uh, and I kind of know where he's going to come in and out. So, you know, again, I'll just block those out based on what I think the camera moves are going to be. Um, then at this point, I can uh, I kind of know what all my takes are. So then this is where I do the HD post-process. Uh, with XN. So I'll kind of go, okay, I've used take six, seven, and eight. And then I'll go into MVN. I will batch process um, those specific scenes. That'll generate the high quality data. And then from there, I'll essentially re record that back into Unreal using those same sort of recorder levels. And then it's just a simple process of I sort of option drag my original capture down. And then I don't think you guys are going to be able to see this here, but um, I just go in, I swap the original capture for the HD capture, and then I go back to the original, tell that to be, I change the slot name to face, which is essentially how I set up my, my animation blueprint so that it knows to use the face from the original capture and the body from the HD capture. Uh, and so with those two in place, I have essentially my final mocap. Um, and 
Uh, I don't generally do, I don't do any sort of like keyframe cleanup on either the face or the body at this point. Um, but what I do do is occasionally, uh, especially with baby Yoda, because his arms are constantly kind of puncturing and he's got a big fat outfit. And so, and, and my proportions are very different than his. So even though I try when I'm performing him to, to bear in mind the body space of him versus me, I still, you know, puncture stuff. And you'll even see in the final of this, there's plenty of points where it all just punctures something you wouldn't leave uh, in an actual production. But anyways, I correct for a lot of that stuff um, just by setting up these simple um, sort of variables in the animation blueprint. Uh, let me just show you one of those real quick. Uh, so for Baby Yoda, uh, normally you wouldn't, nowadays you wouldn't do this. You would just use set up a control rig and then you would just keyframe the control rig. But because essentially you just want the arms, let's say, to kind of like uh, not puncture for a particular moment and then go back to normal. Uh, what I used to do uh, is just, I would create these little transform bones, you know, and all the bones I think I might need to use. I set them up here and then I go into uh, the sequence and then I just kind of keyframe it. So you can kind of see like, let's say here, you know, when he goes to sip out of the cup, for example, was, the only way I could get that cup to line up to his mouth is just keyframe his arm a little bit for this moment, and then it's just back to normal. So it doesn't take me that long. It looks like a lot of keyframes, but I kind of zip through this pretty quickly, look for areas that I can clean up, and then I clean it up. Um, that's basically, and then there's like the head motion. Sometimes there's like, you know, he's not looking right where I want him to look, so I'll kind of keyframe his head and stuff like that. But that's pretty much the extent in which I sort of clean up the data. And uh, uh, so once that's done, then, and I've got the HD post process in there, um, then it's time to uh, jump into cameras and editing. 